Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Tonight we're talking about Hess's Law. Now our objectives for this podcast are to review thermochemical equations and to complete a practice problem using Hess's Law. What I mean by a thermochemical equation is a balanced chemical equation that explicitly shows the amount of heat involved. So it's got actually a numerical value for the heat involved in the reaction. Here's an example. If you take iron and react it with oxygen in a synthesis reaction, you'll form iron 3 oxide. We can balance this equation. And what this and the energy term is negative 1652 kilojoules, the negative sign saying that this is an exothermic process. When this synthesis reaction occurs, energy is released to the surroundings to the tune of 1652 kilojoules. For every 4 moles of iron, 1652 kilojoules of energy are released. That's what we're trying to say here in this reaction. We can make similar relationships for the other reactants and products as well. There are some ways we can manipulate thermochemical equations. One thing we can do to manipulate an equation is to multiply the coefficients by some value, usually an integer, but it could be a fraction if that's what you needed. All right. If you do this, you have to multiply delta H by the same value. And this is because enthalpy is an extensive property. The more you react, the more energy will be involved. Let's show you what I mean. If we have the same reaction we were looking at in the previous slide. So let's say I needed 8 moles of iron to react. All right, so I'm going to multiply all of my coefficients by 2. Well, I need to do the same thing then to the delta H term, to the energy term. If I'm going to react twice as much iron, I'm going to release twice as much energy. The thing I can do to manipulate a thermochemical equation is to flip it. Write the reactants as products and products as reactants. And I can do this, all right? But when a reaction is reversed, the sign of delta H changes. Its value stays the same. The amount of heat involved changes. But now you're changing what direction the energy is flowing. So if we look at the reaction we were talking about before, now as a decomposition reaction, so we start with the iron 3 oxide and we decompose it into its elements. 1652 kilojoules are still involved, but now it's got a positive sign, which means that this is an endothermic process. Energy has to go into the system in order to cause this decomposition reaction. Now we're ready to talk about Hess's law itself. Hess's law states that the overall enthalpy of reaction is the same, whether it occurs in one step or multiple steps. And this is important because sometimes you can't directly measure the enthalpy change for a reaction. It may be too slow, it may be too dangerous, maybe you don't have the equipment. Sometimes it's for a process that is theoretical and it just cannot be measured directly. And you can use Hess's Law to get the answer that you need. I do want to point out that in Hess's Law problems, states of matter are important. H2O liquid is not equivalent to H2O gas. So please be careful about that. If you're trying to cancel things out on both sides, then you do have to match down to the state of matter. In terms of strategy, you want to work backwards from a target reaction. You're normally going to be given the target. You'll be given two or more other equations to work with, and you're going to use those other equations and manipulate them, according to the rules we just learned, to get them to add up to the target. Let's look at a Hess's Law problem and carry it out so that you know exactly what I mean and know how to do these. We're given two reactions. Let's call them reaction A and reaction B. And you're asked to calculate the enthalpy change for this other reaction, the target reaction. This is the reaction we're trying to get to. I'm going to manipulate the other reactions, try and figure out the overall enthalpy of reaction. I like to line up my arrows as I work. So let's look at reaction A and figure out what we want to do. If I look at the first reactant in reaction A, NH3, you'll see that I have NH3 in the target, 
but it's a product. So what that means is for reaction A, we want to flip it. And of course, it means we have to change the sign. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to write the reactants as products and the products as reactants. So 1 half N2 plus 3 halves H2 to give me an H3. I flip the reaction around, so I have to change the sign of delta H for reaction A, so it will now be minus 46 kilojoules. Okay, let's go on and look at the next one. Reaction B. All right. Now, I don't have any elemental hydrogen in the target, if you look at that. I do have elemental oxygen. Now, in reaction B, it's a reactant, but in the target, it's a product. And similarly, I have water in reaction B as a product, but it's a reactant in the target reaction. So, what that says to me is I need to also flip reaction B. And, of course, that means I need to change the sign. All right, so we will write that out, too. So 2H2O gives me 2H2 plus O2. Now, I did flip the reaction around, which means I need to change the sign of delta H. So it is now positive for 84. Okay. Now, the other thing we can think about with the reactions is, you know, if we need to multiply one or either of them by a coefficient. So let's look at our coefficients. For ammonia, in the target reaction, ammonia has a coefficient of 4. But in reaction A, as it's currently written, it's 1. So what we need to do is multiply the entire reaction through by 4. Now, if I do that to the reaction, I have to do it to delta H for reaction A as well. No problem. Let's look at reaction B. For the H2Os, in the target, H, the target reaction, the coefficient for H2O is 6, and I've got a 2. And for the O2s, the coefficient is 3, and I've got a 1. So that says I need to multiply the entire reaction B in its current form by 3. Which means I need to multiply delta H by 3 as well. Okay, so let's sum everything up and see if we can make this work. All right, so and I now have two N2s and six H2s plus six H2Os. And on the product side, I have 4 NH3s and 6 H2s plus 3 O2s. All right. Now, comparing this to the target reaction, you'll notice right away, I don't have any elemental hydrogens in the target. But I have 6 H2s on the left and 6 H2s on the right. They effectively cancel. We can get rid of those. All that's left to do... Um, making sure that everything else is okay, all my coefficients match, everything matches the target. Um, I'm ready now to just add up my delta H's uh, for reactions A and B as we've manipulated them. And the sum of these two values here, all of this here, will give me the overall delta H. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy calculator and do minus 46 times 4 plus 3 times 484, and I get an answer of 1268 kilojoules, assuming I haven't made any foolish math errors. And that is my answer, and I am done with this Hess's Law problem.